Today's video is sponsored by Sneezy Man. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Apologies for the very unflattering look going on here. The lighting, not the greatest and I definitely am suffering from some kind of allergic. We're trying to figure out what it is, but there's something at home that I'm all of a sudden allergic to because I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling... Remember that sneezy vlog from a few weeks ago? I reckon that because, you know, a few hours outside of the house and I was fine and then I came home and started sneezing again. Anyway, so Storm Barra moved through yesterday and to be honest we didn't really have a huge amount of impact windy-ish i guess but <clears throat> no more so than normally here on the north coast and now that it's moved through it has left a bit bit of swell and um still reasonably windy out there probably gusting to about 30 miles an hour now i've actually brought myself down to ballantoy i'm just sitting in the van having a oh by the way very twee isn't it a vw mug as they say in friends looks like volkswagen has been sick on me or something there's a chance of light there's very little chance of light um there's also a very good chance that it's going to be very wet but i just thought i would get out for a couple of hours this morning and see whether or not we could grab anything they're obviously down here at ballantyne i'm sure lots of people from ireland are very aware of it on stormy days it does make for some pretty incredible images and i might at some point throw the old one to four hundred on and just focus on some of those waves bursting over the tops of the um of the rocks but right now, what I'm thinking about is if we do get any kind of night, we are about 15 minutes away from sunrise and the sky looks completely laden. So I'm not sure whether we were going to get any light. But again, lots of weather, looking at the forecast, lots of weather moving through. Some of it prolonged, some of it just little skiffs. And of course, that could give us what we want, just a little bit of light, a little bit of drama on the horizon. But this might be a vlog that ends before it begins in terms of the weather so what i'm going to do is i'm going to carry on having my it doesn't look like there's going to be any need to rush outside so i'm going to carry on having my coffee from my, my very twee mug and um we shall catch up outside so the first of those big squalls is moving through haven't used one of these in a while actually i didn't even realize i still had one the old um, shower cap. I really want to get myself a proper kind of all-weather sort of almost dry bag because th this never feels that secure to be fair. And the photographing over the winter, I really want to be able to kind of set up, but then um, you know protect the camera a little bit. Now you're probably not going to be able to make this out, but behind me, where the um, the the clouds are kind of parting a little bit. Oh my goodness me! There was a little bit of colour in the big old cumulus clouds again, but... Ah! Oh! Jeez! Oh! Oh, it's got a massive bit of hail in my eyeball. Yeah, there's no way I can shoot into that. So I kind of set myself up initially, uh, shooting the opposite way, to where the rain was. But I only literally got one, maybe two shots fired off and um the the light has just completely closed in again at least looking looking over to the east flock of, of birds coming across i'm not sure what they are whether they're oyster catchers or something but they're not really getting very far never going to be able to make that out i'm sure but they're literally just pushing against the wind oh man that is not pleasant not pleasant at all but maybe this squall will die down a little bit and we'll be able to remove our little plastic protection and get on with shooting something Oh man, this is just ridiculous. This is just not fun. Oh, this is horrible. Absolutely horrible. You just you just can't shit into the rain. It's squalling around. There's no light that way. What am I doing out here? Oh, apologies for the audio as well. I've had to take the kind of the wireless mic off because I'm not sure it's waterproof. So apologies for the for the wind potential wind noise. But yeah, this is just oh. Ooh, haven't said that though. Maybe it's clearing a bit. I really want to shoot this way because this is where all the kind of light and the drama is. Behind me here is just kind of blowing over. Behind me here is just 
very sort of monotone, monotone and monochromatic. Whereas actually there's, there's more textures and light across that way. So maybe that, maybe that weather has moved through a bit. So maybe we will head up and see whether we can get the classic shot, the classic shot of Ballantoy. Oh, I haven't said that. No, there's, oh, there's drama all around. I am wet through. Oh. Oh, this is why sometimes it does pay to be kind of in the middle of those weather fronts moving through because as they move through and that's what i was hoping we're starting to actually get a little bit of light and drama uh over rathal island and over sheep island and in fact behind me here as well if i just spin you around without making you feel sick we're getting some of that over here as well so now who knows how long it's going to last for because as i said looking at the sort of forecast it looks like we were getting a bunch of so I'm just going to make another image here. A bunch of um, squalls moving through, but there's lovely textures as yet. So I've actually got the shot set up at the moment. Um, horizontal composition, out of 18 mil. I've got the polarizer on and a four stop on, and it's giving me about ooh, three seconds or so for the main part of the image. And then I'm also bracketing because the, the lighter part of the image is just going to be a little bit too bright. So kind of combine those in, in post. It's okay, preferably I'd want to get down. Now what I'll probably do is I'll probably throw the ISO up here a little bit because I think there, there's so much wave action coming in here that a three second exposure just makes it all very wishy-washy and white out. So rather than muck about with my app or my aperture, I'm just gonna, hang on a minute, I'm just gonna raise the ISO up a little bit. And that's us down now to one second, ISO 400. Oh lordy me, that was a big old wave behind you coming up. Yeah, so that actually helps in, you know, these cameras, ISO 400, meh, eat it for breakfast. Now what I like, the clouds out here as well are just beautiful. Kind of seems to be right in the middle of all of those squalls now, so beautiful. Right, well I'm on filter cleaning duty as well because, oh, let's just see what it looks like. Ah, it's not too bad at the moment, actually, not too bad at the moment, so. Okay, this is Nigel from the future. You really should have checked those filters a little bit closer, mate. But we'll talk about that in next week's vlog. Anyway, back to Stormy Palantoy. I don't like telling you what to do or not do on this channel because photography is a very personal, personal thing for people. But just a little tip, you know, rather than just accepting the settings that you get when you fire on your uh, filters. You know, don't be, don't be afraid to play with the old ISO because as I say, for three, four seconds, I was just getting way, way, way too much sort of white foam. So I wanted to make that base exposure about a second. So I've upped my ISO. Now, of course, as that ambient light increases, I'll be able to lower my ISO again and still match that one second timer. So that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead, throw up this image, and then we'll get blown about a bit some more. Oh, rather nice indeed. So I've moved myself slightly. Down below me here, there's some lovely sort of rocks that kind of are partly showing and partly getting submerged depending on the, on the waves coming in. Now, there's two reasons why I moved my position. Firstly, to see whether or not I could make use of these rocks as a little bit of kind of interest in the, in the foreground and maybe to break up some of those waves. But the, other, but the other reason is to the right of Sheep Island, it was quite bright and it was working for a time but actually the better the drama was actually out sort of more to the, to the left of me, to the right of Sheep Island. And so by sort of moving my position right, I kind of can now naturally make a better shake of, of, of those conditions. Now, on top of Sheep Island, there's a little bit of color has appeared. Now, I don't think, I don't think that that's direct sunlight coming in just as yet, but it, but it might be because it does look like it's kind of spreading down. Which would be which would be quite nice as well. It does look as though we're going to get gnarled by another by another waves or by another um, 
bit of squat. In fact, we absolutely are. I can feel, I can feel the rain coming. Oh, and in fact, as that squall's coming through, we're starting, starting to lose a little bit of the light as well. So it might be time to hunker down again. Right, so I'll put up this second uh, image uh, with my change viewpoint, and then I think it will be time to batten down the hatches. The squall has moved back through again and again it's left some lovely lovely lighting conditions behind so I've brought myself down over to the little secret not so secret beach and actually obviously the storms over the last couple of days have totally changed the landscapes of this beach there's a lovely little s-curve um, outflow uh, happening there quite messy so I'm not going to bother making an image of it just watching those waves coming up actually because every so often there's a oh there's a roogie 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 one whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> like that that's why there's an S curve here Nigel now of course we are approaching high tide as well so I am being just a little bit cautious now especially because I'm over a more sort of down at sea level so yes safety first folks safety first not worth getting yourself into trouble and of course others into trouble as well oh some lovely clouds out over Sheep Island now the light's lovely the light is really nice really really nice right Let's see whether we can get something set up down here. So brought myself to a safe-ish distance from the, from the big wave, but I am keeping an eye on things because there's lots of different ways that the waves can come through, but I'm pretty sure it's all good here. I'm up on a sort of higher plinth. Um, the waves are incredible, absolutely incredible. The mood is incredible, the storm's incredible. Oh, and we're now starting to get some direct light uh, up uh, on, the, on the tips of the, of, of the waves. Wow. So what I ended up doing was I ended up shooting a, a scene just off Sheep Island. Holy smokes. That's a biggie. Yeah, we are now right on right on high tide. Apologies for not paying attention to you, but as I say, I think I'm I think I'm good. Now at the sort of right at the top of high tide. And I took us pretty standard shot just off um, Sheep Island without getting too close. Okay. Again, what I think is really making it is the, the clouds are absolutely fantastic. Just that the real sort of clouds that you get just as those weather squalls move through. However, now doing something a little bit different. So I've actually put myself in a portrait orientation, no filters, and I'm just shooting waves. And my goodness me, that's a lot of fun. Never really done it before. Basically, cable release. I've got it on high kind of shutter count, and you're just kind of watching the waves. And what we have here, which is really going for us, is the waves pound off the, um, the, the side of the cliff and then double back on themselves. And of course, that's what, that's what you really want because you want that kind of interaction. So um, yeah, never really done that before. And again, what is really benefiting here is the clouds in behind the waves are really, really beautiful as well. So I guess what I'll do is I'll throw up the original image, uh, the sort of standardy one, in fact, actually, Sheep Island now has taken on a little bit of light. So what I might do is I might take another image just off Sheep Island with a little bit of light on it. And um, then we'll get back to some wave photography. Oh, it's a whole lot of fun, this. Light has now kind of, I, it, it obviously worked better whenever there was light coming through in those waves. Now there's light still on the, the, the clouds in the background, but we've lost a lot of that light on the waves as that last weather system moves through. Thankfully not a lot of rain on it, but the conditions have been spectacular this morning. And this is what I was hoping for, you know, 
whenever you see the weather forecast that says a little bit of rain, a little bit of sun, a little bit of cloud, grab your camera and get out there. I would love to find, there's a, above me here, you're probably not gonna be able to see it, maybe just a little bit. There's a lovely shape, S-curve of a cloud sort of forming there. I would love to find some foreground that kind of mirrored that, but I haven't really been able to find anything and certainly not that would put me sort of a bit closer to the, to the waves. But again, for me, it's not always about making the image. It's about actually noticing these things and noticing the sort of the textures in the clouds and then thinking to myself, could I find something that would actually, you know, help mirror that in the, in the foreground? Oh, exhilarating and a half. Well, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the van and grab a coffee. And you might say, Nigel, look at the conditions. Stay out, you fool. Well, I'm going to go back and grab a coffee and then come back out again. Again, one of the things I love about even just staying local but being in the van is I can head back there and chill out for a little bit and sort of recharge a few bits and pieces. The other thing that's, that's clearly um, quite interesting shooting waves is because you're shooting on high burst mode, there's going to be a lot of duds in there as well. So, Well, guys, what I'll do is I'll throw up one final wave image. Hope you've enjoyed this little early morning bimble down to Ballantoy. It's a fantastic place. It's been shot so many times. But you know what? This is the face of a man who just does not care. Go to your honeypot locations if it what makes you happy. Shoot the absolute hell out of them. And then on the way back to the car, find something on the ground that no one else would look at and look at that as well. Right guys, well, once again, thanks a lot so much for following along. And um, until next time, take care. Merry Christmas. Anyone having a leftover Christmas turkey sandwich today? That's my plan. No, right, you get the, you get the deal though, don't you? <laughs> yes guys, so once again, thanks a lot for following along. And until next time, Merry Christmas, take care, bye bye.